Good morning. A happy Sunday to everyone. First thing in the morning, what am I thinking of? Making a video message to you. I came across, let me just fix my camera a second. I'm sorry. Okay, hopefully it's a little better. I came across some past YouTube videos of mine that send out a really important message. I'm not saying that my other videos don't. Every video I make is with a purpose. But this one resonated to me just a little more. I did a series about a year ago about emergency foods and what to do when you're in the middle of a food crisis. And I want to get a little serious this morning. Yes, I know, first thing in the morning, here I am getting serious. Let me grab a sip. I'm sitting here in a snuggly blanket on quite a chilly morning. Perhaps you are too. And that's my hope. Sip in a cup of tea or a cup of joe or whatever. But I'm thinking of the many, many people out there that are not able to do such a thing. They may be sleeping in unthinkable situations. I know that I'm going to have simple meals later because, well, I chose to make them simply because that's what I wanted. It was a choice that I made. But some people eat simply because that's all they have. Some people don't even have that. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. This is the time of the year where we start subliminally, anyway, mentally, gathering our nuts, our storage for the winter, so to speak. Many, many times I've done the story about the fat cat and the skinny chicken. But there are times when people become skinny chickens any time of the month without provocation and without asking for it. Did anyone really ask for it this year? You know what I'm trying to say. A lot of people were totally blindsided and railroaded by the current situation. Well, I can't fix the year, but I can suggest some low cost emergency foods. And I'm going to put those videos in the description box below. They were made in, I believe it was August of 2019. But there have been a huge increase in my viewers and subscribers since August of 2019, some of which may be facing this issue today. Is that you? It's the 25th of the month. And yes, for many, many people, this is the time that it's very, very challenging just to even eat. So these are the foods that I strongly suggest that you can get. Emergency foods for very tough times includes potatoes, any sort of potato, try to get the best price. Beans, which many people know about. Not everyone likes beans though. Some people prefer peas, rice, and pasta. You can do a thousand things with pasta. Treat rice and pasta and potatoes like the blank canvas they are. They could be dressed up, they could be dressed down. Uh, if you could manage to get a box of eggs, you could do a lot of things. If you don't have butter or any sort of fats to work with it, boil them up. Make some hard-boiled eggs. Team it up with, with a potato and make a hearty meal. Potato and egg, for example. Proteins. Many people who are under-budgeted for food lack protein because they're either eating only a potato or only rice. And while that may fill up a person for a few minutes, it just doesn't give the stretch that protein does that's necessary for your muscles and so on and so forth. Um, even though they're not the healthiest protein, this is not the time to be designer food fussy. When you're hungry, you don't care, but you have to eat, okay? Um, for example, Buy things like uh, bologna, uh, bacon. There was a time, getting to bacon for a second, that turkey bacon was a lot cheaper than pork bacon. 
I don't know. I think they're starting, for some reason, they're starting to compete with each other now that people realize turkey bacon tastes really good. But if you're going to get bacon, and if you happen to like either or, get the one that's the least expensive that is affordable. There's a lot to be said about a simple package of frankfurters. They stretch far. You could do a lot of things with it besides just eat it as a whole frankfurter. You could cut them up. You could fry them up, throw them in one of your salads. Uh, by the way, a potato and egg salad is very, very filling. So if you could work with that, if you do not happen to have any condiments like mayonnaise to make that salad, if you have good old fashioned vinegar and a little bit of oil, make a vinaigrette and uh, doctor it up, you know, the way you like to with what you have. Remember, you're working with what you have, okay? This is a very challenging time of the month for many, many people. Other inexpensive proteins includes, you may not like to hear these words, you know, you know, certain things about them. If a food contains a nitrite, let's say like bacon or Frankfurt or whatever, or spam, try to have an orange or a little orange juice if you have any. If you have, if you don't have orange juice, if you have an orange, have the whole orange because the vitamin C supposedly counteracts any, any effects. This is what I read. I'm not a doctor. I'm just saying what I read counteracts the ill effects of the nitrosamines, but very inexpensive proteins to get you by until you could get something better quality. Include bacon, frankfurters, uh, spam, uh, Vienna sausage, and I think think one of them is called potted beef. I've never had it, potted meat or potted beef. Somebody out there may understand what that is. I literally do not. I've never had it, but I did research on the stuff that's out there. Um, if you buy a pound of uh, ground beef, which actually may seem like a luxury to someone going through these challenges, and if you're able to get it at a very good price that you can squeeze in, then what you do is you're going to divide that up, okay? You're going to either plump it up or divide that up. I would say go with the rule of half. Cut that package in half, literally. One night, make a meatloaf, plump it up with a couple of eggs and a bread and whatever you have, canned vegetables, throw it all in there. You're going to get yourself a ginormous uh, meatloaf for your lunch or dinner. You could have it for dinner one night. You could slice up the rest uh, the next day for lunch and make a meatloaf sandwich. There you go. And the other half, like make crumbles, like, you know, like ground crumbles that you can use, sprinkle them, sprinkle those crumbles on a, a bowl of pasta with some inexpensive topping of your choice with what you have. Because after all, this is your situation and you can't always go according to the prescribed stuff that everybody else talks about on any other platform. You have to do with what works with you. Um, another idea with the crumbles, if you want, you could go three ways and make a sloppy Joe night. Um, and it's always good, of course, to invest in any sort of pasta. First, look around in what you have, in what you can work with. Then, so let's say you only have 5 or $10 to work with before your next check, for example. And this would be probably the time of the month. You know what I'm trying to say? First, you look at what you have, study your inventory. If a recipe calls for a certain cut of pasta, but you only have a different cut of pasta, if you need a smaller cut and the thing you have is a bigger cut, break the pasta in half. Cut it up into smaller pieces, okay? And this is the perfect time to make a big pot of soup with whatever you have and you got yourself something to eat. Don't be afraid to learn how to make quick breads. Uh, if you have like basic flours and you know me with the uh, pancake mix, the complete one, Try to, when times are better in the better part of your month, be sure to purchase a box or two, if you can, a pancake complete mix that you just add water, okay? And if you run out of syrup, you can make your own simple syrup uh, with simply uh, sugar and water, if you want. Or you could just sprinkle some sugar on top or take a little bit of jam or take a little bit of jelly 
and then just gloss over your pancake and roll it up and even make it look special, you know? Because sometimes a person could probably feel down and out, like mentally, uh, with when they are financially down and out. And hard times can happen to anybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you have. Tough times can happen to anybody. But we're talking about the person that is like literally down to like, like not very much before their next replenishment of either their SNAP benefit, of course, the bird clock, or their um, income, whatever their income is, if even if they don't get a SNAP benefit, whatever the income is. Um, these situations are fixable, and it's never the right time. It's never, I, I don't believe in chastising people when they're down, like, yeah, you should do this, oh, you should do that, you know, holier-than-thou speeches. When a person is down and out, that is not the time. That is, you don't, you don't beat a person when they're down. This is my opinion, and, and that's how I approach people, and that's how I approach life. But, um, so, okay, so to recapitulize this, assess what you do have, okay? If, if you're going through this very extreme moment right now, okay, work with what you have. If you have $10, try to only spend five out of the 10. Make a game out of it. I know this sounds really crazy, but you would be amazed. And another thing, I think in general in life, every one of us has a tendency to overconsume. I've heard of people eating a three egg omelet. Do you really need a three egg omelet? Can't you get by with a two egg omelet? Or I have even sometimes there were situations where I was running low on eggs, but I was counting to make sure that I had enough till I get to the grocery store again. So I would just have a one egg omelet and just like, you know, cut up a vegetable or something and, and plump it up. Just adapt accordingly to your situation. Um, it's nice to have a sweet treat. It just makes you feel a little better sometimes. I'm not saying going overboard. When you have your better times in a month, buy a couple of boxes of instant puddings or jellos. It's always good to have something like that on hand, okay? Um, if you could get good prices on yogurt for nutrition, get the best price possible. Uh, and take advantage. Uh, yogurt is a protein-packed thing. And you know that you can make your own yogurt. I have made my own yogurt uh, many, many times. In fact, I'm due to make a yogurt because um, I have some milk that uh, is about on the verge of getting a little spoiled, and I don't want that to happen because I am a huge, huge do-not-waste-your-food kind of person because there are people that are just really hurting for food right now and would really want what you might think is tossable. Somebody else will look at it as a feast. So um, I'm just saying, just saying. Um, now here's where um, I encourage my viewers right now who stuck by me this long to watch this video. If you have any inexpensive, um, not many recipe, uh, not many recipe, not many ingredient recipes Please uh, mention this in the comment section below to help out a neighbor. By doing such a thing, you wouldn't believe the impact that videos do have on people. They read the comments. They may not say anything, but they're reading comments, and they're getting some of the most helpful tips and tricks actually come from you, not even so much the video creators sometimes. Um, I, I mean, this is just something that I've observed, so please jump in come up with some like emergency end of the month food ideas for people who are really willing to do everything to make things happen, but might be having just a little bit of an extra struggle at this time. And this of course is the time that I'm also going to ask anyone if you can contribute to your local food bank or food pantry in some way, shape, manner, or form, whether it's by uh, volunteering uh, personally, your time, or one can at a time, donating your canned goods. Um, people need them. People need them. And if you are the person who needs to, needs to get there, then by all means get there. If you are on the verge of needing to go on, uh, let's say, a SNAP benefit, which uh, you know is a food stamp benefit, 
said, you cannot, you have to throw your pride away. And if you need to feed your family and yourself, pride does not feed a hungry stomach. More people die from pride. So just, yeah, I'm just saying, and uh, that's it. Thank you so much for your time. And I just thought it was due, that it was due to have this kind of talk. Because, you know, sometimes we talk so much about things that really and truly on the grand scheme of things are kind of like um, nice, but not 100 million percent necessary things. And I'm really glad that we can do that mostly because it should be that way because life should be happy and enjoyable. But the reality is that some people are not waking up under a snuggly blanket, are not sipping the favorite cup of joe, and don't even have the technology or even the luxury to be watching this video. And in the meantime, this has been Jan from New York City. Please click like, share, and kindly consider subscribing to this channel. Have a wonderful and blessed day.